Hello learners. Welcome to this course on Arduino Megaboard Programming and Simulation. In this tutorial, I am going to discuss about on how to interface a 4x4 keypad with Atmega 2560 microcontroller which is embedded into your Arduino Mega. A keypad is an input device. So whenever we press a key in a keypad that can be sensed and it can be recognized which key is pressed and depending upon that we can build different applications like a calculator, a keyboard functionality etc. So the important advantage of using a matrix keypad is we can reduce the number of GPIO pins. So for example, here I am going to take a 4x4 matrix keypad. So 4x4 in the sense we have 16 switches connected in a matrix format. So here you can see I have the rows indicated by x1 to x4, columns are indicated by y1 to y4. So each intersection point between a row and a column will have a switch and the switch will be mapped to the ASCII value of the characters or symbols depending upon the application it will be mapped. For example in this application we have something like the first switch is mapped with 1, second switch is mapped with 2, third switch is mapped with 3, fourth switch is mapped with capital A. So like that it goes on. So each switch can be mapped with a character, number or some symbols. So by doing this type of a matrix keypad, we are reducing the number of GPIO lines. So for example, if I want to interface the 16 switches to a microcontroller, we require 16 GPIO lines. But by using a matrix keypad, we are reducing it to 8 lines, 4 for rows and 4 for columns. So that is the biggest advantage of having your matrix keypad. We can reduce the number of GPIO lines. So the matrix keypad can be interfaced with your microcontroller in three different modes. A normal mode, pull-up mode and a pull-down mode. So first let us look at a pull-up mode. So in a pull-up mode, here I have shown how the matrix keypad is interfaced with your microcontroller in a pull-up mode. So the rows, row 1 to row 4 are connected with the pull-up resistor and the resistors are connected to a supply. So by default what happens, the rows are at logic height. The rows, when it is connected to a microcontroller, the corresponding port lines will be configured as an output pins. So the microcontroller sends 0 to the rows and it tries to read the corresponding columns. So the columns interface to your microcontroller port lines will be configured as the input lines. So the rows will be configured as output, columns will be configured as input. So by sending 0 to the row and by reading the column, if a logic 0 is available on the column, then the microcontroller can easily identify which key has been pressed. For example, let us take row 3. So a logic 0 is sent to row 3 and if column 3 is read as 0, which means S11 has been pressed. So since S11 has been pressed, it becomes a short circuit. So the logic 0 comes as an output in your column 3, which is read by your microcontroller. So this is what happens in your pull-up mode. So a logic 0 to a row and by reading the corresponding columns, if the column value is 0, then the microcontroller can easily identify which key is pressed. Out of the 16 keys, which key has been pressed. So that can be easily recognized. That is your pull-up mode. Next mode is your pull-down mode. So in pull-down mode, again the rows are configured as output, columns are configured as input. But the main difference here is 
the rows are connected to a pull down resistor the pull down resistors are connected to ground so what happens to the rows by default the row lines are at logic 0 so now the microcontroller has to send a logic high so whenever there is a key press the corresponding column will read it as logic high in pull down mode logic 0 is sent and the column reads 0 to identify a key press whereas in pull down mode a logic high is sent through through the row and the corresponding column is read as high whenever there is a key press in the normal mode it's something similar to that of your pull down mode the major difference is the rows are not connected to the pull down resistor so what happens uh, logic high to the rows then the corresponding column will get a high whenever there is a key press a logic low to the row then the corresponding column will get a logic low whenever there is a key press so that is what happens in your normal mode so now in this program what we are going to do is we are going to identify a key press, which key is pressed and display the pressed key in the virtual terminal. So in order to do that, what we do here is we take Atmega 2560 microcontroller which is available in your Arduino Mega board. We take a 4x4 matrix keypad which has 16 switches. So where we have the rows R1 to R4 column C1 to C4. So it is named as A to D for rows, 1 to 4 for columns. So this rows A to D are connected to PB4 to PB7 which is nothing but the pins of 10 to 13 in your Arduino mega board and columns 1 to 4 is connected to PH3 to PH6 which is nothing but the pins of Arduino board from 6 to 9. And in order to connect a virtual terminal, we use UART0. So UART0 where the receiver line is at pin number 0 and transmitter line is at pin number 1. So we take a virtual terminal. The TXD line of your virtual terminal is connected to RX0. RXD line of your virtual terminal is connected to TX0. The one important thing here you have to remember is whenever a particular key is pressed, the corresponding key should be mapped with the ASCII value of the keypad. For example, if this S1 has a sticker 1, then what we have to do, whenever this S1 is pressed, we have to send the ASCII value of 1. So here I show the ASCII chart for the numbers, alphabets, capital alphabet, small alphabet, symbols, etc. So the ASCII value of 1 is 49. So whenever switch S1 is pressed, if it is having a sticker of 1, then the ASCII value 49 should be sent to the virtual terminal. Same way, if I have the switch S16 as a sticker of something like 0, right? then in that case, whenever switch S16 is pressed, the corresponding ASCII value 48 should be sent to the virtual terminal. So the switch should be mapped with the ASCII value of the sticker available in the keypad. So keypad may vary. It can have different, there is no universal type of keypad. So in one particular keypad, the S1 can be mapped with 1. In another keypad, the S1 can be mapped with 7. In another keypad, it can be mapped with some plus sign or minus sign. So it can vary. So depending upon what type of keypad you are using, you have to map the corresponding switch to the ASCII value of that character. So for in order to perform this program, we will be using Arduino IDE as an integrated development environment where we will be writing our embedded C program, converting this embedded C program into a hexadecimal file. Then we use a Proteus 8 professional to build the circuit. 
then load this hexadecimal file onto the Arduino board and check the logic. Now let us go and build a circuit using Proteus 8 Professional. So this is a interfacing diagram. So here I have taken Arduino Mega board which contains Atmega 2560 microcontroller and I have taken a 4x4 matrix keypad. So here you can see the A to D are represented by rows, 1 to 4 are represented by columns. So A to D is connected to PB4 to PB7, PB4 to PB7 which is nothing but pin number 10 to pin number 13 and the columns 1 to 4 are connected to PH3 to PH6 which is pin number 6 to pin number 9. And here we have connected the matrix keypad in a normal mode. We have not used a pull up resistor or pull down resistor here. So we have connected the matrix keypad in a normal mode. So a logic 0 sent to the row and if a corresponding key press is there then the columns will read logic 0. If a logic 1 is sent to rows the corresponding key press will give a logic high to the columns. So that is how a normal mode operation works. And we have, we have used a UART 0 here. So I have taken TX09 which is pin number 1 which is connected to the RXD line of your virtual terminal and RX0 which is pin number 0 is connected to the TXD line of your virtual terminal. So this is how the interfacing part is done in your Proteus A professional. Let us go to the program and discuss the program. So first thing is we have a lot of libraries available. Third party libraries are available. You try to download this keypad.h header file and add it to your library. So you can add by just Go to this sketch, include library. So in that after downloading, you will get a zip file. So that zip file can be added here. Once you have added, you can see the library keypad here in this window. So then the library gets added. So I try to include that header file as include keypad.h and we declare constant bytes rows 4, columns 4. Since we have taken 4 by 4 matrix keypad, we take rows as 4, columns as 4. Then we try to define the character array, hexa keys, rows, comma, columns, so row 4, comma, 4. So we try to put the corresponding ASCII values. So the ASCII value of 7 for the first key, second key ASCII value of 8, for the third key ASCII value of 9, for the fourth key it will be ASCII value of divide. So like that we try to map each key press with the corresponding ASCII value. So in order to get the ASCII value, we put this character in single quotes. Then the corresponding ASCII value will be assigned in the character matrix. Then I define the row pins and column pins. So the row pins are 10, 11, 12, 13 and column pins are 6, 7, 8, 9 of your Arduino Mega. Then we initialize the instance of a class of a keypad. So we take from this header file keypad, we define a class name and we try to provide the data for the keypad. So one is we provide the matrix here, the corresponding ASCII value of each key. Then how many row pins are there? Column pins, number of row pins and column pins. So what are the row pins, what are the column pins, how many rows and how many columns. So a keypad class is defined. We go to the void setup function. We initialize the UART protocol by putting serial.begin at 9600 baud rate. So the number of bits transmitted per second is 9600 bits transmitted per second. So we are going to use you want 0, so I put serial dot begin function. Then in a loop, first we are trying to read whether a key is pressed. 
So we already defined the class for the keypad which is custom keypad. So in a custom keypad I use a function called as dot get key. So this will try to read which key is pressed. A corresponding value will be saved onto the custom key. The custom key will be a ASCII value related to the key press. And I try to check whether the custom key is there. If it is there, then I try to send the data to the virtual terminal. So we check for a key press. Upon identification of a key press, the corresponding ASCII value will come to the custom key variable and the custom key will be sent to the virtual terminal for getting printed. Once programming is done, you can go and export the compiled binary, which will convert your C program into a hexadecimal file. Once this is done, you can go to the Proteus environment and put the hexadecimal file here. Right click on the Arduino board, edit properties, select the hexadecimal file. So this is your hexadecimal file. You can see hexadecimal file, keypad.c.ino.mega. So this file, we try to load it onto the Arduino mega. And set the clock frequency to be anywhere between 0 to 16 megahertz. So here I am going to use 16 megahertz. That's okay. Now we have dumped the hexadecimal file onto your Arduino Mega. Now let us check whether it is working properly or not. Let us play the button. So now the virtual terminal is open. It is waiting for a key press. When I press a key, for example, right now I am going to press 2. You can see in the virtual terminal it is showing 2. If I press divide, it shows divide. Same if I press 7, it shows 7. So depending upon which key is pressed, the corresponding ASCII value is sent to the virtual terminal. So if I press 6, you can see 6. So that is how a keypad can be interfaced with your Arduino Mega board. So in this tutorial, I have discussed about on how to interface a 4x4 keypad with Arduino Mega board. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more technical learning. Thank you.